Yeah, hi everybody. This is Rick Walker on behalf of the Jazz Society of Santa Cruz County. Uh, and we're happy to do this monthly first Sunday Jazz for Everybody lecture. And the whole intent of the lecture is to present some concepts that anyone who's just starting out in jazz can get something out of and that advanced professionals by the end of the lecture can get some interesting concepts as well. We kind of want to do this in terms of solidarity for the jazz movement, get the beginners and the advanced people all together because we are a small community and it, we need to grow as a community. So um, without any further ado, I'd like to introduce you to uh, Dan Robbins, who's uh, one of my favorite, uh, I was going to say bassist, but it's not really true. One of my favorite musicians that I know in my life that I've played with, been blessed to play with personally. and. Um, He's an amazing uh, 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 bassist, musician, composer, uh, band leader, teacher, uh, professor. He teaches at San Jose State University and at Santa Clara University. Uh, and um, uh, one thing I can say about Dan is, is that uh, Christian McBride, one of the greatest bass players in the world, played up at, uh, at, at the San Francisco Jazz Festival to do a solo show. And he, he called Dan up and had Dan come up and play duets with him. And that's the level of musician that this, uh, this young man is. So I want to, without any further ado, uh, uh, introduce you to Dan Robbins. Uh, and thanks for, thanks for doing this, Dan. Thank you so much, man. You got to be good at something. So, man, I appreciate the kind words. And uh, this is what I'm here to do. So we're talking about melody. Your melody begins with your tone, right? You want to grab someone with the sound. So one of the things I found just really valuable is whatever you're practicing, let's say you got to practice fundamentals, you got to do scales, intervals, all of that. But just to like turn every note of a scale into a meditation. Listen to how it adds some tension either wants to go back up or down or up. I'm doing D major right now. So they look to really one of the things I found really valuable with my bass students is to drone a D. This is a five string. My D strings here in the middle. Drone a D and practice any scale you can think of, but where you keep the drone going. And really just listen to how these notes want to resolve up or down. With this exercise, you can go down to the fifth or even the fourth or the sharp four. Notice the regular fourth of a major scale. Kind of a tense sound, tense, T-E-N-S-E. Whereas the sharp four wants to come up to the five, to my ear. I'm gonna go back to major. So here's the root. Practice surrounding those notes. This is the fifth. Listen to how they, it wants to move. Fourth can go up, can go down. Notice, even though I'm practicing the scale, I'm trying to get a beautiful sound. So you can practice this smooth move not only between intervals of a second or just up a scale, right? Major second, but also thirds, root to the third second to the fourth. Listen how beautiful that is. I'm not talking about going... I'm talking about turning it into music. get to where you can pre-hear whatever that interval is going to be. And 
that's going to come with being able to play intervallically. Not only seconds, but I said thirds. You can do fourths, of course. And to me, what's really interesting about doing this against a drone is you feel the whole sonority of the chord. So do this with all of your modes. Um, I just flatted the seventh. Here's a regular seventh. Make it a meditation. If you're out of tune, just slide in or tune your fretted instrument. So, and then again, work on surrounding those notes. Right? Take your minors. Like especially, you know, Dorian has a root, flat seven, a regular sixth, right? That regular six is really compelling in this minor. Contrast it with a natural minor where you have a flat six, very different sound. Just working on surrounding these scale tones. Trying to notice how they make me feel. Like landing on this one doesn't sound as resolved as or that was only in one key so another thing you can do <clears throat> is take a tune that you're working on and do that with each chord of the tune so one that I was planning on working on here is uh, just friends here so let me see I'm gonna share screen if you don't know the song There's zoom Dan Robbins where are you here we go so I don't know what's on my desktop I'm gonna have to hide it somehow but don't look at that look at this <laughs> That's why I did. Here we go. This is just friends. So I'm going to do this with C major 7. I'm going to make a loop. A loop is an incredible practice tool for anyone that has a chord or a monophonic instrument. You can get a, a microphone uh, looper and do it with your horn, whatever. I'm just going to make it uh, C major. I'll do the first three chords. So there's C major 7 and then C minor 7 and then F7. See how you can connect a beautiful sound, like see how little you can play. So ask yourself, okay, look at this first note. It's a B against a C. Right? So if that's the seventh of the chord, well, that doesn't mean you have to only approach that seven from the six a whole step away. How about a half step? One of my favorite things, this is like my freaking musical career is based around a chromatic approach. So I'll do something like. I'm going to approach every note. Major seventh, now I'm gonna approach the minor seventh, and then approach the third of the F. So like right there, that was a C major nine. I was on the ninth, seventh, fifth, third. But I love the this. Look at that, that's a sharp one. That shouldn't belong, a C sharp on a C, but it's beautiful when you resolve it to an inside scale tone. Oh, surround notes.
Okay, so how do you build that language? Well, go back to your drone. Make yourself a C minor drone. Let's just imagine our first drone was all on C. Let's do a minor one now. Um, let's do it like this. So that's a C minor to an F7, right? That's the bars three and four here. So just work on getting beautiful sounds with that. Now, most of you probably know that that right there is a 2-5 progression. It's one of the most common things you're ever gonna hear in jazz. So if you know that's a 2-5, C minor is the two. The one is B flat, right? So let's just mess around with a B flat major scale, and, but slowly and with beautiful sound. I'm just gonna start on the root. I'm gonna come down the scale. So I was able to make music out of just a scale coming down because I've done the work of knowing what it's going to sound like when I go there. So you can just practice these drones for a while. Do it with every chord, man. It's all about more focus on less information. So start with just the drone, just the sonority. I skipped ahead, now we've got two chords. I'm just going to go up B flat major. Right there, I'm just doing thirds. But I'm putting something interesting rhythmically and doing that chromatic approach I'm talking about. See how that's a third? It's just this. But I'm adding the chromatic approach. And you notice I'm doing little drop offs because to me, I love that sound. It kind of pulls you in. It's a little like. Now you notice. It's important to do this in every key because an instrument like this or your horn, different keys have different challenges. Like for this instrument, it's this transition area here because all this crap gets in the way. But that just means you got to do the work. And practicing chromatic, chroma, chromatic approaches is going to build chops because you're not just going anymore. I'll keep it interesting with like a, a motif. But as soon as I gotta play one of the other notes. It forces new technique, right? I gotta learn how to go. Okay, so that's just some fundamentals. I, I gotta kinda move fast because Jesus we're all, okay we're 15 minutes in that's perfect I'm gonna turn this off and then what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna give myself a little loop um, sorry not a loop iReal Pro if you don't have iReal Pro get it you gotta have it so I'm gonna play this tune just friends I lost my um, share screen let's try that again here we go so I'm just gonna let's see what this tempo is I'm playing the melody. So let me talk about that for a second. You see, da 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 da, right? Let's imagine we didn't hear a bunch of versions. We're just reading a chart. We don't really know the song. We'll try some of these chromatic approaches. Sorry, let me start this over again. Dave. Keep going.
that device, if I've done the work and I've realized that, okay, here's the C, I'm starting on the seventh, I could make an arpeggio out of that. So I've made something more interesting and made it my own from just knowing enough about theory that that's the seventh of a C major chord and that I could use parts of the arpeggio or even parts of the scale. Like, how about this? Okay, and then on that G chord, if I'm playing an A, I realize it's the ninth. Well, I could make that into a major ninth arpeggio. Nine, seven, five, three, one. Da, 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 da. So, or it could be a scale thing. Okay, and this comes to mind if you have a, let's say, traditionally monophonic instrument like a bass or a horn. You can imply harmony with just two notes. How about the, just give yourself a root and the melody? So I'll try it. I haven't done this, but let's see. A one, two, three, four. Adding the roots. Notice there was some of the time there I didn't even play the root, but because I did a little bit of it, your ear kind of fills in the gap a lot. So if you just add a few of these things, it brings a lot more depth to your melodic playing. Let's try that again. Notice how I kind of de-emphasize some of the stuff in the middle, so it's not taking over. You know, I'm not playing. I'm stiff, but I'm trying to give it some life, right? So dynamics within your phrases, right? Which in these examples. Notice my little fills, my little answers to the question um, are de-emphasized a little bit in volume because I don't want to overtake the melody. I just want to add a little bit to it, right? Um, so again, adding some arpeggios leading up or down, putting some scale notes around it. <laughs> Doing the chromatic approach. One thing you can do is just chromatic approach all of them. I mean, it'd be a good practice. It doesn't mean you have to do it all the time. Because um, again, that's going to force your technique into new places on the instrument, right? Um, so let me just, let me just play without talking. I'm going to try this. I'm just going to see what happens. Two, three, four.
not all about playing fast at all. Dramatic approach everything. Sounds cool, right? I missed the two notes, but I have chromatic approach, so it's all good. So I'm going to stop for a second. Another idea is um, melodic compression or expansion. Let's say you got this melody written here, but you either lay back on some of the notes so you, and then like kind of rush into the melody to give it more expression so it isn't just like straight out of the page right so basically um leaving more space and then cramming in more notes leading into the next phrase or taking longer to play those notes i'll try a little bit of that so again i'm calling this melodic compression or expansion so here we go forever to get there right. Like that added some drama. another song now because you know you probably heard enough of that song let me get over to my little gig book here okay I'm gonna bring up another song another one of my favorites now a lot of these ideas for this purpose of this clinic work on these kind of like medium up tunes you know like not super burning because bebop sometimes if it's all you can do to get the melody in there clean and articulate that's enough, you know, that's like a study, that's like an etude. So I'm choosing more expressive songs, songs to me that are more expressive. Because um, I like them when they're a little bit slower. The slower the song, the wider the range of dynamics you can have. Um, what I call textural dy dynamics, where there's a great variety of densities. Like you can play super sparse, and then you can have... 16th note runs you can have triplets you can imply 12 8 or 4 4 this is specifically reminding me of a ballad because one of my favorite things to do is play a ballad because you get the greatest variety of textures that work super well but first i want to do this alone together um so i'm going to use some of these approaches and then talk about it last viewed let's see what tempo is this this is kind of the same tempo, 135-ish. Compression expansion. Mix it my own. A little fill in there, right? the whole song with just the melody note and the bass note. 
anybody can do this. I have the lugs right now. No one's playing. I'm getting my own mix. I can really get into the sound of this bass and this microphone. I don't get this luxury on a lot of gigs, right? Um, so hopefully you can hear, because it's inspiring to me how clear everything sounds right now. Like, I use that chromatic thing just everywhere, you know. Um, So there's like a chromatic below and diatonic above. So like this is F this is an F, the flat three of D minor, right? So just the chromatic approach is just this and here's the approach to the E. See, to me it sounds a lot more interesting than I was reading it verbatim right so I kind of made it my own and again this goes back to spending time with your just getting a nice sound don't have me do this with the bow it, it won't feel as good to me or maybe you either <laughs> always more to learn um, and then you're gonna take all of those notes and get into how beautiful is that that major third for just a moment as you approach the fourth in a minor key one of my favorite sounds is moving through it so we lift up on the four here's the five let's use the natural six Okay, so you heard me hopefully using the chromatic approaches, the uh, melodic compression and expansion, um, some fills, right, where I just kind of let her rip on something that I was hearing because I've done the work. You know, there's no shortcuts. You got to do the work. Um, uh, and then you heard some arpeggios up to the melody notes. But again, it all begins with the sound, right? Oh yeah, and then you also heard me just play the bass notes with the melody notes. And you horn players, you can all do that. Like, you know, you heard Chris Potter take 20 minute solos where he's like bouncing around, playing the whole tune, you can hear everything, um, you know. And another thing is consider all the different roles of the instruments in the band, try being that, like, okay, be the horn player on the bass, right? I, I try to do that a lot in my solos, but then be a bass player on your horn, right? Because you can learn a ton learning how to uh, connect chords with just quarter notes, you know? And then same thing with bass players. You come in with a good uh, bass line and then you vary the rhythms. I'm at 
imagining I was just playing quarter notes. But you put the rhythm and the feel. So you don't have to avoid the roots. You know, that's another thing. I'll play a root on every change here. force myself to do that other times you know I'm wanting to connect chord tones uh, let's try a little bit of that but I'm gonna think mostly roots and I'm gonna think really clear I'm gonna imagine I'm taking a walking solo uh, using the notes that I would choose as a walking bass player yeah I'll start down here <laughs> and turn it into something melodic just by varying the rhythms maybe doing some chromatic approaches uh, yeah let's see what happens So, where are we at? That was a half an hour, 35 minutes of Dan. Um, let's talk about it. Okay, let's go to a ballad now where we can get really deep into the textural dynamics that I'm talking about here. So we're going to do Body and Soul. And I'm purposefully playing tunes that hopefully you guys all know. If you don't, these are some of the super standards. Um, uh, where are we? B O. <laughs> nope. Body, body. Almost there. There it is. Okay, if you all don't know this song, um, I'm going to give myself a backing track here and I'm going to take a sip of water. And I'm just going to. Should I look in the chat? Should I see what's going on over here? Let's stop share just for a minute. I'm going to see if anybody is chatting over here. Oh, yeah. Actually, and before I forget to say anything, if you're just coming on, big, huge thanks to Rick Walker and the Jazz Society of Santa Cruz County for putting these on. They do them once a month, um, and they're made possible by your generous donations. So if you're not a Jazz Society member, please consider joining. They do amazing, wonderful things for the community here. I do these workshops, you know, no one turned away for lack of funds. So please join the Jazz Society, donate. Pretty sure you can do a monthly auto donation. So anyway, thanks again for all of that. And I'm just, okay, there isn't anything here that I need to check out. Okay, so we're going to go back to the share. Um, and here's Body and Soul. Let's see. I'm guessing it's 60. Okay, yeah, here we go.
just like I planned it. Yay. So that was like the extreme, right? Um, of sticking with the melody, melodic compression expansion, right? You heard moments of where I just filled in with arpeggios and stuff like that. Um, like, let me, this can be an example. I'm gonna wait forever. So I might have lost myself there a little bit, but I did it with the track. It's easier to do it with the track. And then you heard me do where I just do the bass notes. Because, I mean, why not cultivate solo playing, right? No matter what your instrument. some flubs there right I've never tried D flat right put it in D that's another great thing uh, to know about solo playing is put it in a key that works great on your instrument right that's what all these guys Ralph Towner Joe Pass uh, whoever you name it you know they're usually pretty great at putting it into a key that works better but gosh that sounds wrong doing it in D I gotta get in the key. I gotta do my drones. Okay. Because now I got open strings, that's why. Uh oh. I'm gonna need to work it out. Um, but this shouldn't be too hard. Let's see. Back to E flat. Even if it's something simple. you get catch what I'm what I'm leading in there with right um, so bouncing between the melody and the bass note notice a lot of dynamics within the phrase right again I have the luxury you're such a beautiful audience you're just sitting there hopefully listening and enjoying and like I've really got this beautiful stage so I thank you I get this nice microphone I'm feeling good about the sound and everything that's a big thing you know if, if you play live, which hopefully you do, find the microphone that works awesome for your instrument. You know, Find the pickup. Spend the money on a good instrument. Spend the money on the good setup. Because it all begins with the sound of your instrument, right? And for a bass player, for me, the amp is part of my sound. Or in this case, I have this beautiful mic. I don't use this live just because I haven't COVID, whatever. But um, make sure you're getting that tone you want because I'm feeling inspired by this sound right now. I'm a little bit spoiled by it um, so make sure you got that happening you know probably not brand new strings but find the strings you like the gauges you like get it set up to where it's nice and easy to play you know what I'm saying S spend the money because that's what's gonna inspire your music you know find that instrument you know and it, it takes some time you know I've gone through six seven bases till I got this one and this is the one now um, let's see and maybe I should open it up to any questions is that a good idea rick yeah we got about five minutes left although you, the questions can go as long as you'd like right J just re remember to let me know when you're when you're done yeah so I, hopefully i've expounded upon these concepts here enough that uh this is recorded you can probably get a, a recording of it i'll, I'll just um 
reiterate once again, the bouncing between the melody and the bass note, putting your dynamics within the phrase, right? Uh, like little fills or arpeggiations or approaches, those can be de-emphasized a little bit in volume so that it doesn't upstage your melody. Um, did a lot of the chromatic lead-in. <laughs> Sometimes I do, oh yeah, my, my style is a chromatic approach to the chromatic approach, right? Let, let's go crazy with that. To chromatic approach to the chromatic approach. <laughs> That was a little ridiculous, but you know, you can see how ridiculousness should be part of music, you know, humor, comedy, uh, drama, you know, it's all about drama. It's, it's like, you don't want to go. You got to start with that. Right. But if you just like say add a bass note to that, it's going to turn into more music. Very strict re reading of the melody. This is probably how you start learning the tune, you know? You know, that's going to build chops, you know? If you got one note at a time. Or... You know, find, find the ways to connect those notes more in tune than I just did. There it is. Um, yeah, okay, I want to open it up to questions now. Just if something wasn't clear, I want to uh, expound. So let's go over to chat. I guess chat your questions or just yell it out. What do you think, Rick? Yeah, Christopher Erskine had a, a, a good question about melody. Cool. You want to come on and ask that, Chris? He, he asked if you'd sing the melody in your head before you're playing a melody. Yeah, I was, I was mainly just thinking about that as maybe one example of how you would keep your place in a song that's, you know, like this one's really slow or some songs are really fast, but it's so easy to lose your lose your place, like where you, where you are in the song. Right. Well, you know, <clears throat> addressing those fundamentals of like learn the bass line on your horn or learn to bounce between that bass note and then the melody note, that's going to help solidify your form as a horn player that's used to playing on top. You know, so even without a rhythm section, if you cultivate that, um, you'll, you'll totally ingrain the form, you know, and then at a certain point as you're going through it, close the book, you get three, four bars in, you're like, oh, shoot, I forgot what it was, damn it. Okay, you can open the book and look. Oh, that's what it is. Okay, maybe you play it once and then shut the book again. Because the book becomes a crutch. Like, the first time you go to a gig and you've forgotten your book and then you realize you do okay, that's like this huge defining moment in growing as a jazz musician. You know, it, it takes some time. But, um, yeah, just be able to address all those functions. And, yes, for a bass player, by all means, if you're getting lost or whatever, like, learn the melody, hear it in your head. And, in fact, just as a band leader tip, you know, adrenaline's going on a gig and you're supposed to call out tunes and you're going to call stuff too fast, man. But if you sing the melody in your head beforehand, especially the chorus, if it's like a pop tune or a rock tune, like hear the chorus in your head because that's where it's really ingrained how it should feel in the tempo. Sing the chorus in your head first and then count it from there. Um, hopefully that helps. Thanks, Chris. Anybody else? I just loved uh, uh, your um, introduction of, of pretty radical dynamics between going to, to melody notes and then like whatever chromatics going up to it or whatever. Um, that was right. that's really not that that it so clearly 
what's the word? It telegraphs what you're doing mm. and, and, and it makes it much more interesting. So that's that's a beautiful concept. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, I love it. It, it, it just it's so easy to do. I mean, it, the concept just chromatic approach, you know, because there's that built in drama tension, the moment of that's because that was extreme right but you just pick the moments and practice extreme like take your scale we did this in my last click you know whatever scale i was thinking b flat right here i started on the fifth but swing it and correctly approach every note Notice how I had to radically change my fingering from to it forces a lot of new chops you gotta build. And you know if 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 it's just a couple of them Maybe it's not all of them, maybe it's just like two of them. Maybe you just love the third. That's like the first one everyone learns. Or these little chromatic things. And probably a good place to start is also just do it with your arpeggios. This goes back to my last clinic where we did a lot of this also. But um, yeah, thanks Rick. I love it too. I feel like it's the cornerstone of my improvisational approach. Uh, you know, I was also thinking, too, that, you know, when, when you have uh, guitar players can bend strings to get those glisses, but you're playing a fretless instrument, so you can do a lot of really neat things, you know, by running up to things. But and I, I play more keyboards than anything, but I was just thinking really super quick chromatic runs are kind of the keyboard players uh, uh, gliss because we right. can't gliss on a piano. Right. Uh, and, and then playing those chordal bass tones is the same thing as playing the chord against the melody as you're playing for the keyboard player. Um, so it's kind of yeah. it's neat how each instrument has got to really change its vibe. Uh, uh, and yet still a keyboard player can think like a bass player, which they normally don't do. And a sax player can and a bass player can think like a singer. And yeah, look, think of all those roles. And yeah, Chris asked, do you sing the melody in your head? Like, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and the more you can get away from the page, like you notice, I put those up for you guys to look at, but those are songs I've been playing forever. I don't have to think about them at all. You know, I can sound good on those because I've memorized them. You know what I mean? Like there's a lot of other stuff that I'm not going to sound very good on yet, <laughs> but I got to, you know, do what I, do what I know. Um, and there's a lot to be said for like really focusing on one song like I, back in the days of like cassette tapes i used to go through my records and find all of the all the things you are and i'd have like you know two sides of all the things you are by all these different artists and just like totally entrench that song and then you know six versions of body and soul on another tape you know and just like <laughs> really so really focusing on you know more focus on on less information in the same way that i'm saying you know practice getting to the sound of your instrument and the way each interval could resolve up, it could resolve down um, and then it could and then the chromatic thing is just another part of that so yeah um, anything else I got a lot out of uh, the, the first thing when you were just playing drone notes and really hearing the intervals and moving through the intervals. And I was thinking about that the other t day is that I, as a keyboard player, sometimes I forget that every note on the piano is beautiful. Sure. You just play that note. It's so beautiful. It's why you chose that instrument if you chose it, because it, it, there's something really beautiful about it. And sometimes in a melody, just going, oh, my God, it this melodic motion right here is so gorgeous right. against maybe this harmony or just as a pure melody you know and it's like loving it really yeah. deeply is is really a meditation yeah martin man had something on his facebook a while ago he's like you gotta fall in love with every note yeah you know? so when you said that like this move is so good like I've, I've thought of you know what is it uh the 
da, 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 da. Oh yeah. You know, coming out of the bridge of body and soul, I mean, that's just like so. Da, 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 da. So pretty. One of those moments, yeah. So, so I, I don't think I really embellish much at all there ever in, in that particular spot because, yeah, there's some super dramatic little moment. Um, probably slid into it. Yeah. Any other questions? Oh, here's a couple chats. Let's see. Do you have a strategy for leading with melody and then embellishing with harmony? Top down. Um, yeah, I think I tended to do that arpeggio arpeggioistically. Um, let's see. Which tune? I was going to do Stella. Let's put myself on the spot. I didn't get to that. Ooh, in G major. One time a student came over and said, hey, man, let's play Stella in G. And I thought, okay. And I got shredded. <laughs> it sounds beautiful in G, especially guitar players, but we're going to do it in B flat. So strategy... Let's see what's going to happen. I don't know. Let's see what happens. Two, three. That's the low hanging fruit right there. So much of that. I always do it here though. There's a better example. Okay, so th there's a better example at the bridge. Um, da -da -da -da, you know, G augmented. I probably do that way too much. You're gonna hear me on the gig. He's like, oh, here's, yeah, he's gonna, ah, he did that. Yep. Da, 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 da. So I'm thinking about what note is it against the chord? This is right at the bridge of Stella by Starlet at the G7 chord, and the melody note is like a D sharp or E flat, which is a sharp five. So I'm just thinking an augmented chord there, and then you got. Da, 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 da. And then the next chord is a C with an F on top and a minor. Well, that's an 11 in minor, right? Because if you went up in thirds on that chord, C minor, you'd have root, flat third, fifth, flat seven, nine, eleven. It's one of the greatest sounds in the world. Minor 11 sound. Um, so I used that. So do do there's the G7, there's a da 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 so arpeggiistically, then then this note, a D against an A flat dominant. Well, you gotta do some work, but you realize if you stack up your thirds, one, three, five, flat seven, nine, D, that's a sharp eleven. So what I did, same thing. I just went down arpeggio notes, and then a C against the B flat, major seven, this is the last chord of the bridge. That's the ninth, so. I just, actually, that bridge is beautiful for these color tones. That's where it seemed to work best for me on this song. Uh, you got the sharp five on the G chord, then you got the 11 on the C minor chord. Then the sharp 11 on the A flat chord. 
uh, and then the ninth on the B flat chord. So, yeah, practice those arpeggios from the melody down, and then C minor 11, and then A flat 7 sharp 11, and then B flat major 9. Ah, ah, that's why I did it here, didn't I? Not only, sometimes that fifth string is not what you want. <laughs> um, maybe that helps. It worked better on Just Friends. Uh, I played the wrong chord there, sorry. So on the C major 7, the first chord, you had to be... I just went down the arpeggio. There's a C minor. It didn't work as well. But then the ninth of the G chord, the next phrase. That's the ninth of the G. I just came down the arpeggio. And notice I kind of de-emphasized it. You know, and I wouldn't do all of this all of the time, but you know, I'm compacting a lot of what I can into this little hour here. Probably overplaying all over the place, but you know, I'm having fun. I'm enjoying the sound, you know, get, get it into the sound. Get into the sound of your instrument. Oh, let's see. Bass plus minimum is your first step for sure, absolutely. Down with that, yeah. Because that's how you can easily identify what the interval is of the melody versus against the bass note of the chord. And then if you can spell out the chord, then you realize what note is on top. So yeah, absolutely, Mike. Um, do you kind of sing the melody in your head while you're adding to it? I mean, in a sense, the tunes that I know well enough, I, I hear in my head, and uh, I don't have to read it. You know, it's a whole different... I feel like... This is my theory, but I feel like it's a completely different part of your brain when you're reading music than when you're playing it, you know, off the page, you know. I'm sure there's like studies. I'm, I'm positive it's a different part of your brain. So I always play better on a tune that I know. Um, are there common approaches to a note that aren't simply neighboring or chromatic? Yeah. To a note. Um, yeah, you could come up from a fifth or a fourth. I'd like to know how you produce the backup tracks. Well, I'm using iReal Pro. I think it's 10 or 15 or 20 bucks. Definitely worth it. You got to go on the forums and download all the songs. It doesn't come with anything because a few things because of copyright, but just go to the forums and get everything. Um, common approaches to a note that aren't simply neighboring or chromatic. Yeah, I guess there are. Neighboring or chromatic are just easier for me, so it's become a, uh, an intuitive part of my language. Um, but yeah, and also using the arpeggio. <laughs> to work on that more for sure Any, anyone else thanks you're welcome <laughs> stoked that there's some people here that care enough to listen it's a lot of fun it's fun to share uh any other questions and again if you're just getting on thanks to the jazz society of santa cruz you know Please donate. That's how they're able to do these little clinics. They do one every month. Um, thanks to Rick Walker and Suki and everyone on the uh, Santa Cruz Jazz Society. All the board and all the people that support. And I think you can do monthly donations if you're so inclined. Keep it rolling for everyone. Yeah, well, thank you, Dan. That was uh, really uh, illustrative. I learned a lot personally, and uh, and I just awesome. really Appreciate it. I can't wait to see you play out soon. We're getting closer, uh, obviously. But yeah. uh, thanks for taking the time to do this. And uh, just want to let everybody know that um, we'll post how to get hold of Dan if you want to take some private lessons. Uh, uh, and uh, he does lessons on Zoom. And um, not on the porch, too. Yes. Uh, yes. And on the porch with social distancing. Cool. 
Um, so anyway, so we're, we're going to bring this to a close right now. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to just stop the recording, but we can stay online if we want to chat informally right after that. So on behalf of the uh, Jazz uh, uh, Society of Santa Cruz County, who uh, are financing this thing with your generous support, um, I want to thank Dan Robbins and uh, we'll see you uh, next month on Sunday, uh, June 6th, I believe it is. And that will be uh, Terrell Eaton's going to give a fascinating talk. I've been talking with him a lot about what he's going to talk about, and I'm not going to reveal that now. But anyway, yeah, thank, thank you so much, Dan. Uh, uh, take care. Thank you so much, everyone.